Tomorrow is budget day and all eyes will be on Finance Minister Tharman Shanmugaratnam as he announces the government's spending plan for the year. The annual announcement is highly anticipated, not least because it plays a key role in steering the local economic and social direction. Its priority in recent years has been to promote economic productivity and social inclusiveness. But it hasn't always been so. In this week's Spotlight, Nicole Tan takes a look at how, over the past 50 years, fiscal policy has transformed to meet Singapore's changing needs. Entrepot trade was the lifeblood of Singapore's economy in the early 1960s. But it wasn't expanding fast enough to cater to a rapidly increasing population on an island with no natural resources. And when the government got down to working out the first budget for a newly independent nation in 1965, it saw the need for action. In particular, there was an urgent need to provide employment for almost 100,000 job seekers over the next five years. The first budget was delivered here at the old parliament chamber by then Minister for Finance Lim Kim San for the financial year 1966. The focus then was on creating jobs, maintaining a level of education, housing and medical and welfare services for a fast growing population. The main strategy was to industrialize the economy while increasing trade activities with export markets through a one and a half billion dollar five year plan. We had to shift away from an inward-looking development approach to one that fundamentally would have to try to attract foreign direct investments because foreign direct investments bring the necessary technology which at that point we could not develop ourselves. By doing that, we generated good jobs and good pay. The fiscal budget for 1966 was a total of almost $507 million. Some key items included more than $130 million set aside for the Ministry of Law and National Development, for infrastructure projects such as land reclamation and the construction of roads and homes, and about $83 million for the Finance Ministry, mainly to build industrial real estate. Almost 50 years on, in 2014, the size of the pie had multiplied by more than 100 times to $56.7 billion on the back of significant transformation in Singapore's social and economic landscape. The land area has since grown by almost a quarter, the population nearly tripled to 5.5 million, and national income increased by more than a hundredfold. When it comes to distributing the budget, economists say the preparation can span over three to six months. Even then, observers say the process is a continuous one. We've always had the luxury, but it's a shrinking luxury, of planning for the future and actually being able to execute into the future. Crises will emerge out of nowhere, uh, sometimes in proportions that are beyond our ability to limit the damage to our economy because we're so plugged into the world economy. All ministries actually unconsciously or consciously um, do financial planning and, and you know, uh, program evaluation and management throughout the year. In the face of change, priorities for the budget too have shifted. But one key consideration has always remained. The all-important question of can we live within our means, the pressure is actually on lowering revenue collections and that's something real for us too because our tax rates are already very competitive. So we need to balance the um, issue of can you collect enough revenues to sustain uh, the longer term plans that we would want so that we can continue to enjoy a certain degree of livelihood. Experts say Singapore's been successful in growing its revenue without making significant changes to tax rates. In 1966, customs and excise duties on imported goods contributed a third of the nation's tax base and income tax less than a fifth. As Singapore's business activity and employment rose, income tax, both corporate and personal, grew to almost 40% of the pie. You could potentially grow your tax revenue without changing the tax rate a great deal, which has been our experience. If you can continue to, to, to become a place where you essentially attract good businesses and people to come. Besides seeking to attract foreign firms and investment, 
Experts say over the years, the budget has also set the direction for domestic players. In the 1980s, the government began to steer the economy away from labor-intensive and low-end manufacturing, up the value chain towards high-technology, high-skilled industries. In the most recent decade, the focus has been on encouraging productivity and entrepreneurship. The Productivity and Innovation Credit Scheme was introduced in 2010 to provide tax incentives and funding for R&D, intellectual property, automation and training. This is about changing the structure of the economy such that it is able to adapt to a new global environment. So continued investment in education and training and skill upgrading, those are very important. At the same time, we must also to ensure that we, we, we continue to uh, you know, upgrade the technology, the capabilities of enterprises, such that they are able to become uh, global or at least regional players. And they can provide and create meaningful jobs for Singaporeans. However, amid a thriving economy, social pressures to redistribute the wealth began to emerge. Academics say the wage gap between skilled and unskilled workers started to widen from 2000. And in 2007, the government implemented the Workfare Income Supplement Scheme to add to the savings of low-wage workers. Meanwhile, the most recent budget in 2014 made education bursaries accessible to a larger proportion of Singaporean households. And the Pioneer Generation package was introduced, including subsidies for health care and insurance for Singapore's aging population. The budget is a very powerful statement. It's not just a financial spreadsheet to say where the government is going to be spending in the next year. In addition to that, it is a social contract between government and Singaporeans. You know that the government through the budget has identified that these are the concerns that Singaporeans face and therefore even if it is symbolic, it is addressed. Other than setting long-term goals, economists say the budget has been a tool to help boost the economy when needed. For instance, from the first post-independence recession in 1985 to the Asian financial crisis in 1997 and the most recent global financial crisis in 2008. Those episodes have actually uh, tested not only the fundamentals of the Singapore economy, but as well as how fiscal policy is able to respond to that. The fiscal policy comes in very importantly as a counter cyclical measures. So for example, during the US financial crisis, the government rolled out wage credit scheme. And that has been a very important policy tool to ensure that the impact on the labour market is minimised. Minister for Finance. While fiscal policy has played a key role in nation building in the past 50 years, looking ahead into the next half century, economists say the annual budget should not be seen in isolation, but rather as a continuation of fiscal policies and to make adjustments to adapt to the fast changing global landscape. This budget builds on the changes that we have been making in recent years as Singapore enters a new phase. Madam Speaker, I'd like to move.